it's Ivy Slater, and you're listening to Her Success Story Podcast, a show where gutsy businesswomen share their success journey. Hi, welcome to today's episode of Her Success Story. I am Ivy Slater, and I am thrilled to be continuing with our nonprofit series. For those of you who have been following us, we have done some amazing interviews, both here on Her Success Story, as well as on our LinkedIn Live show. We are learning about so many organizations that are making a difference in a variety of different sectors out there, different places. So if you have not been following it, and this is your very first listen into the nonprofit series, I know you want to go back to Her Success Story, as well as the LinkedIn Live shows, Her Slater Success Live, and check out these organizations. Today, I have to say, is near and dear to my heart. But those of you who follow me know that I was a dancer back in my early years. And through networking, as networking as we do, and meeting wonderful people, I was connected to today's guest. I am thrilled to introduce you today to an extraordinary individual who is changing the lives of so many children who are at risk in the New York City area. Diana Beyer is the founder of the New York Theater Ballet School and its LIFT program, that's L-I-F-T. In 1978, Diana established the New York Theater Ballet, a critically acclaimed professional chamber company and its school. A former professional dancer herself, Diana has made it her life's work to train the next generation of of classical dancers and on the way has made a huge impact on the lives of so many underserved young, young people. In 1989, Diana established NYTB's Innovative Community Service, LIFT, that's L-I-F-T, providing year-round scholarships for talented at-risk and homeless children at the New York Theater Ballet School. It's based on additions held in shelters and public schools. It gives full scholarships to every child that is, has the pleasure of partaking in the program. Its graduates have taken the diligence, discipline, and perseverance cultivated through LISP to earn advanced academic degrees and to become professional dancers. The study program has won recognition from the White House and the National Endowments for the Arts as a model national program. Diana, thank you so much for taking the time to join me here today. Oh, Ivy, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm quite excited about it. Thanks. Uh, so tell me a little bit, you know, you're a former dancer mm-hmm. and, you know, there, there's there's a lot of former dancers around this world, Diana. There's only so many who start schools and then start full nonprofit or, you know, avenues to help young people have better have better success in their lives. So share a little bit how the transition from performer to businesswoman truthfully <laughs> and, and, then, and then you know um it, it happened for you well first of all I still perform I still do the old lady roles so I haven't Woo-hoo! yet <laughs> I love that I love that um well the company started uh by accident I had been dancing as a soloist with like Grand Valley Canadian and I came back to New York on a layover uh, to study with my teacher, Margaret Krask, and a bunch of the boys had been dancing in Europe, and they came back the same month, and they wanted to choreograph, and of course they wanted to use the same dancers, and I thought, well, you've never produced a show, this doesn't seem very logical, why don't you each do one piece, use the same dancers, and I'll do the paperwork. So I did that. We started to get bookings. I said I would do it for three months because I really wanted to dance. And the three months has turned into 44 years of directing the company. Uh, And Lyft came about by accident as well. Skylar Chapin, who was commissioner at the Department of Cultural Affairs in 1989, had this really terrific idea of busing about 30 to 35 children 
from several shelters to different arts organizations. And New York Theater Ballet was one of the arts organizations that was chosen. And the children came uh, for six days, Monday through Friday, for ballet, a hot breakfast, reading skills and vocabulary, a hot lunch, and then I set up a room uh, that was like a bookstore. We had 3,000 books, and the children could choose books for themselves, their siblings, and their moms. And the last day, we did a big holiday dinner with all home cooking. I had volunteers, and the children showed their parents what they learned. And then we had a big turkey, a big ham, vegetables, pies, everything you can imagine to celebrate the holiday. And then the kids went home. And I realized there's a little flaw here. The children right. get what something happens, wonderful. What happens? That's, that's you yeah. know, you make, you make a massive impact. And then what's next? Well, these children, their whole life, things get taken away. It's so right. transient. So that's how Lyft started. I decided to keep it going and offer, offer scholarships to children that had some talent, um, were hungry to dance, had a lot of courage, wanted to grab onto what they were given, and Lyft happened. So it's interesting, you know, yes, of course there's talent, but you said some really significant things about being hungry to dance, have courage. Well, I think that you know, when you get right down to it, how many children who study dance become dancers? You know, two Very percent, fair. maybe. So lift, um, you know, if I knew the kids were hungry to learn dance, they'd be hungry to learn everything else. And dance is a great tool to teach learning skills for children that are hungry for dance, they're going to be hungry to learn math and to learn English and to learn anything they can get their hands on. Um, so children that need tutoring, they went into a different room and got tutoring before or after ballet. Um, we try to get computers when we can. If the child doesn't have computers, we try to get uh, children into private school if they're not doing well in public school. It's more than dance class. We make sure they have their socks and their scarves for the winter. It's kind of everything that promotes good learning that they might not have access to. You know, it's it's an interesting, the conversation we're having is bringing, for me, very interesting thoughts. Because people said, you know, Ivy, how did you learn business? How did you, how did you go from, from dancing, you know, five, six days a week, dancing through college, getting a degree in dance, a degree in communications to, to becoming a businesswoman and now working with business leaders and leadership. And I've, I've said two things. It's one is, and this is truly in my foundation, my dance background gave me the ethics of what it is to truly want something, commit to it, and work for it. Mm -hmm. It's very true. And I think it, it teaches you um, to be aware of others in space, that it's not just your space. You have to look around you, and your behavior affects everyone in the room. Uh, I think that that's a lesson, especially for the children that we get through the LIFT program. Um, being and I, I think that's a huge lesson for all of us in yeah. life. And that's a yeah. huge lesson on leadership is being aware of everybody in your space and everybody mm -hmm. in your surrounding and how you we have the ability to impact or not impact. Yeah, and it's simple things too, like being on time, taking care of your clothes and making sure they're clean. If the child forgets their leotard, they don't take class. And I understand that the lives of some of the children are transient. They're moving from place to place. My feeling is when they apply for jobs, they're, no one's going to ask where they came from. Remember your leotard. You know, that's part of being growing up, being responsible. So yeah. we're kind of teaching all those skills along You're teaching with huge dance. life skills. Exactly. Huge life skills. Exactly. The dance is just is a catalyst and a, a um, center. But all the skills you're learning around that. Well, I think any art does that. Yes. 
you know, music can do that. Acting, I mean, every art form that does, I think, does that. And the one thing special about dance is that dance encompasses so many other art forms. There's music, there's design, there's literature. You know, it's all in dance. So. What, um, you know, I know you're involved in so much. Um, with, with the LIFT program, curious how, how you've navigated the last few years, several years with everything from the concept of raising the funds to reaching the students during this a very, very challenging time that we're thankfully moving, moving from. Well, during COVID, I couldn't audition so that we weren't getting new children unless a principal of a school might know me and spot someone that that way we were getting new children, but I couldn't go into schools and audition. I couldn't go into shelters and audition. So this year we're just starting to audition again. Uh, we'll be going in two weeks into some of the schools and shelters. Um, so it's been hard, but the children, most of the children that come stick with it. So the children were still coming and we were doing the best we could to make sure they had tools to learn um, on Zoom which is really hard, you know, when you're, when there's five kids in the family and they all are in different grades and there's one phone and one computer, how does that work? Mm -hmm. Not very well. Not very well. Yeah. And in, now that you're out auditioning again, and I know um, your experience in, in leadership and, you know, your principal, your principal ballerina, you know, that's a leader in and of itself, very often at a very young age. Mm -hmm. And you've done so much in building the, the company and then the, the school and the lift program. In the, during this time, would you be open to share some of the incredible things you've seen with the students who've come through this? and the impact it's made on lives? Through COVID? No, through the LIFT program and through the school. Um, you know, for all the children, not just the LIFT children, I think- All the children. Yeah, what we've been talking about, it's uh, this, a certain kind of discipline, I always call it a loving discipline, where they have they take responsibility for themselves and learn kindness to help each other uh, for the children when they're cast in Nutcracker or they're cast in Sleeping Beauty or Carnival of the Animals or different ballets that we have with children's roles. They uh, the ones that did it the year before and now are too tall are teaching the children that have been cast for this year. So they teach that they have that kind of calm, kindness to give back. They learn to give their knowledge back to someone else who's coming up um, without uh, kind of any ego or jealousy or envy getting in the way because they don't have the role this year. You know, we work hard on that. And to, um, uh, I think to navigate the world in a positive way, and if they do fail, to pick themselves up, go again, and then succeed. I think that's important, especially nowadays when everything's a good job. It's kind of hard to know where you stand in the world when everything and every child is doing a good job, which isn't realistic. And I kind of teach that. You know, if it's not correct, we work on it, and it's not correct. So I think that's a life lesson. Uh, and I think that that's a huge life lesson and something to be learned of. We're not going to all get things at the same time. We're not going to all master things. And it's the dedication. It, it's that commitment about staying in the learning. Mm -hmm. And, and trying and trying again, being committed, do the most excellent work you can do that day. A hundred percent. And maybe it won't work, but then the next day it might, if you just keep at it. And I think that's a good life lesson. 
what is some of the things, what is something in, in this journey? Cause you're, you're, you're been at this a while. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> what are some of the things that surprised you? I, in addition to starting all of the things that surprised you? Well, what the big surprise is that I ended up directing a ballet company and running <laughs> a school, which was never, ever anything I dreamt of. It wasn't something that I particularly wanted to do. And it just happened. And that's the biggest surprise, I think. Uh, also, um, you know, I was always searching to find something to do socially, because I think when you're in an art form, if that's your profession, you need to do something social. I think it's important because art, you know, somebody you give your art away for other people to watch or to read. Um, and I think see, finding Lyft through the Department of Cultural Affairs was a surprise. It gave me something that I felt I could do and I could do well. And then watching the children grow. And not every child was able to grab onto it. We've had failures, but we've had a lot of successes. And to see the children, um, you know, with the Lyft film, it's um, coming out in oh you have to tell March. us more about yeah, the film because I March. I did see the trailer and I was gonna say I was so disappointed I was like oh right it's only the trailer when can I see the whole film uh -huh. well you see very clearly uh Victor Abreu who was with us starting at nine years old and is now a dancer with New York City Ballet and you see Stephen Melendez, who is the new director of New York Theatre Ballet, who's taken my place and he's performed all over the world. And then two young girls that are um, seeing their adventure of being in a shelter and moving into public housing. And um, yeah, that's kind of seeing those successes is... Uh, surprising you know I just didn't think it would happen that way and I have one girl uh, who's now in the secret service and traveling the world and I have a girl who is working in finance and doing so well she came from a battered women's shelter you know they're finding their place in society where they can work and give back and that's what Lyft does and I, I love, you know, some people have gone on to find careers and futures as dancers, and some of your students have gone on to find various avenues that fit them in their adulthood. Mm -hmm. how, did, how did they stay connected to all of these amazing students? Well, I'm not connected with everyone. I'm connected with the children who want to keep connected with me. Um, and there's a lot and we stay in touch and I'm very interested in how they're doing in school and how they're doing with their job search and their work and um, some kids give back they come if they're in New York they come help with the children during our performance seasons or they might fill in as an assistant in a class if the assistants not av available um, some of them still come and take the adult class in the evenings. So it just kind of depends on the, the person, if how much they want to stay connected. It's, you know, and very often we, we choose as adults to stay connected to the relationships that made impacts on our lives. So it's, that's not a surprise. Right. But some, because of the background, don't want to stay connected. Okay. You know, that that part of their life they want to leave. Because I know a lot about them, you know, and some people don't want that in their future. So tell us a little bit about this movie that was made. Well, Lyft, when I was approached by David Peterson about Lyft, I said yes. And in my mind, it was going to be two months, maybe three months that he'd come in and shoot. And maybe something would happen and maybe not. Well, the shoot was 11 years. He's wow. had answers for these children for 11 years. And he's made a film that 
talks about homelessness in a real way, um, about the children, and usually films that are about homelessness are about the man you might see sleeping in the street. Well, there's many thousands, tens of thousands of families living in shelters, and what's the plight of these children? You know, going to school, it's not easy when you live in a shelter. You can't go have any friends over. Um, I remember in the early days when I first started, some of the children were always put in the back of the class because the teachers didn't know how long they'd be there and were sort of ignored. And they were not getting the education they should have been getting. I think things are different now. Um, but it's not an easy life. I remember the first time I went into the shelter and I had to be frisked and go through two gates, like going into a jail. And it was, I mean, think if you're six years old going through that and you're the kid that gets the free lunch and you're the kid that's clothes aren't so clean, not because you don't want them to be clean, but you know, washing machine costs money. So it's, it's a difficult life, and what I want to do is try to get them brave enough to go through that life and come out on the other end. It sounds like you're doing an amazing job impacting many. How can, how can our listeners lean in, learn more about the programming, the performances, the release of, of Lift, the movie, um, and about making a difference in other children's lives like you have been. Well, um, you can visit our website, and I hope you do. It's nytb.org, and everything is there. Um, there's Lift, our performances coming up, our past, our present, our future. It's all on the website. And... I think for communities to get involved, you know, it's something I would like to do. I would love to go into communities and help them get started on programs like this because I have to say there are programs for, I'm going to say, poor children whose parents aren't financially secure. Programs for homeless children is a whole different ballgame. I think people are afraid and there's nothing to be afraid of. Every child that comes into a classroom has a problem. Well, this is a different set of problems that have to be dealt with, and they can be dealt with, and there's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, you just do the best you can, and I think that there's so much talent in the shelter system and children that are so smart, and they don't have a chance unless somebody steps in, and I don't think I want to say these very large programs work for that population. I think it has to be very much one-on-one -on -one, uh, because you have to watch. You have to make sure they have what they need because they're not coming in usually with those things and you just have to keep your eyes open. But I would love to try and set programs up in other places with other arts organizations. And it's a beautiful thing to take the arts and make the impact and make a big, in, big impact on the homeless population and the children who are growing up in that environment and showing, giving them something to, in a way I want to say tether to. Well, but also it helps the parents too. It helps the mom. You know, it's not just the child. I remember years ago when we had some real money for the program, we had a social worker come in while the child was in class, the parent was working with a social worker. And we had great success with that because, you know, they just need help to kind of navigate. And to me, it's education, education, education. And I, I, I agree with you. It is always about the education. And it's I admire and respect your willingness to your journey to continue to learn and expand yourself and continue to step into waters that you never saw yourself in. Um, and as you've learned and seen to show up at 100% and making a difference. Well, you can only keep at it, 
keep working hard and doing what you have to do, right? I, I love it. Thank you so much, Diana, for joining us today on Her Success Story. Please check the links out below. Diana Beyer and the New York Theater Ballet is making a huge impact. The Lyft program is an amazing experience to be part of the arts and having a future from the impact of learning about the arts is incredible. I thank you so much for the work you're doing. Stay tuned for more wonderful episodes with our nonprofit series. Going.